physical world. And of course, if you don't have any surface, you can start using your palm for simply operation. I'm here, I'm dialing a phone number just using my hand. Yep. The camera is actually not only understanding your hand movements, but interestingly, it's also able to understand what objects you are holding in your hand. What we are doing here is actually, for example, in this case, the book cover is matched with so many thousands of, or maybe millions of books online and checking out which book it is. Once it has that information, it finds out more reviews about that, or maybe uh, New York Times had a sound over you on that, so you can actually hear on a physical book as a review Churchill of a sound. gave a famous talk at Harvard University. This was Thank Obama's uh, last visit uh, last week Thank to you, MIT. MIT. And in particular, I want to thank two outstanding uh, MIT So I was seeing the live of his talk outside uh, in just a newspaper. Your newspaper will show you live of your weather information rather than having updated like a, you have to check your computer in order to do that, right? <laughs> when I'm going back, I can just use my boarding pass and to check, uh, oh, my flight has been how much delayed? Because at that particular time, I'm not feeling of opening my iPhone and checking out a particular icon. And I think this technology will not only change the way, <laughs> yes, it will change the way we interact with people also, not only the physical world. The fun part is like I'm going to Boston Metro and playing Pong game inside the train on, on the ground, right? And I think the imagination is the only limit of what you can think of when this kind of technology merging with the real life. But many of you argue actually that all of our work is not only about physical objects. We actually do all lots of uh, accounting and paper editing and all those kind of things. What about that? And many of you are actually excited about the next generation tablet computers to come out in the market. So rather than waiting for that, I actually made my own um, and just using a piece of paper. So what here I did is uh, remove the camera, the, all the cameras, webcam, have a microphone inside that camera. I removed that microphone from that. And that, just pinch that, like I just make a clip out of that microphone and clip that to a piece of paper, any paper that you found around. So now this, the sound of the touch is exactly getting me when exactly I'm touching the paper. But the camera is actually tracking where my fingers are moving. You can, of course, watch movies. Good afternoon. My name is Russell, and I am a wilderness explorer in Tribe 54. And you can, of course, play games. Uh... Here the camera is actually understanding how you're holding the paper and playing the car racing game. Many of you already must have thought, okay, you can browse, yeah. Of course, you can browse uh, to any, any website. So you can do all sorts of computing on a piece of paper wherever you need it. So, but more interestingly, I'm interested that how we can take that in a more dynamic way. When I come back to my desk, I can just pinch that information back to my desktop so that I can use my, my full-size computer. And why only computers? We can, we can just play with papers. Like paper world is interesting uh, to play with. So here I'm taking a part of a document and putting over here the second part of a, from second place. And I'm actually modifying the information that I have over there. Yeah, and then I'm saying, okay, let's, this, is, this looks nice. Let me print it out, that thing. So I have a now printout of that thing. And now, so the, the workflow is more intuitive the way that we used to do before, maybe 20 years back, rather than now switching between these two worlds. So as a last thought, I think that integrating information to our everyday objects will not only help us to get rid of the digital divide, the gap between these two worlds, but will also help us in some way to stay human, to, to be more connected to our physical world. And it will actually help us not end up being machines sitting in front of another machines. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So for now, first of all, I mean, you're a genius. This is incredible. Ready. Thanks a lot. Um, 
What, what, are you, what are you doing with this? Is there, is there a company being planned? Or, how, or is this research forever or what? So there are lots of companies, actually sponsored companies of Media Lab, are interested in taking this ahead in a one or other way. The companies like mobile phone operators want to take this in a different way than, than the NGOs in India are thinking that why can we only have sixth sense? We should have a fifth sense for missing sense people who cannot speak. Maybe this technology can be used for them to speak out uh, in a different way, but maybe speaker system. I mean, what are your own plans? Are you, are, My, you, are you staying at MIT or are you going to do I'm, something with I'm, it? I'm trying to make this more available to people so that anyone can develop their own sixth sense device because the hardware is actually not that, uh, that, uh, that uh, hard to manufacture or something hard to make your own. own. And we will, I will provide all the open source software for them maybe starting next month. Right. So that, open source? Wow. Yes. Wow. Are you going to come back to India with some of this yeah, at some yeah, point? Yes, of course. But, but, I mean, what are your plans, MIT, India? How are you going to split your, your time going forward? There is a lot of energy here, lots of learning. Like all of this work that you have ever seen is all about uh, I, my learning in India. And now, even if you see, it's more about the cost effectiveness. The system costs you $300 compared to the like $20,000 of surface tables or anything like that. Or maybe even the $2 mouse gesture system at that time was costing around like $5,000. So we actually, uh, I showed that to, uh, in one of the conference uh, to President Abdul Kalam at that time. And then he said, okay, we should use this in Baba Atomic Research Center for some use of that. So I'm more excited about how I can te- bring the technology to masses uh, rather than just staying that technology into lab or environment. Into like that. Based, on, based on the people we've seen at TED, I, I would say you're truly one of the two or three most best inventors in the world right now. And Thank it's you. been an honor to have you here at TED. Thank you. Thank you nice so much. You. That's fantastic.